says the Lord God. My people went down at first into Egypt to sold. No, I'm sorry, I know it's wrong. 53-4. Now we got it. Ready? Go. Surely he had borne our griefs. What's grief? Sicknesses, weaknesses, and distress. So he took upon him not only our sickness, but if we're weak in an area, okay? If we're weak with self-confidence, if, if we're weak uh, in relationships, he took all that rhythm and distresses. If we're being distressed in one area, if you don't have finances to pay your bills, are you distressed or are you happy? Right. You're distressed, right or wrong? Okay, so surely he had borne our griefs. Everybody ready to go? Sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses. And what else did he do? He carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. Verse 5. Ready to go. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needed to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Either you're going to believe it or not, that's your faith war, that's your faith battle, that's the war that you got to face in your lives. And I believe what the Word of God says, and now we have to uh, obtain this and receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So now, Jesus paid the price for us in full for our sicknesses. Drop down to verse 10, 23, 10, and then verse 12. Ready? Go. Yet, everybody ready? Go. Yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief and made him sick when you and he make his life an offering for sin and he has risen from the dead in time to come. He shall see his spiritual offspring, which is us. He shall prolong his days and the will and pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Verse 12. Therefore, will I divide him a portion with the great kings and rulers. Who's that? Us. Okay, go. And he shall divide the spoil with the mighty, because he poured out his life unto death. And he let himself be regarded as what? As a criminal, and be numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore and took away the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors for the rebellious. How many of us have been rebellious? I guess you were born a little baby. What are they normally? Rebellious, okay? Uh, so this is for all of us, and this is the good news that Jesus paid the price, not in half, but in full, for all of our sicknesses, for all of our diseases, for all of our griefs, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. If, if a husband leaves a wife, or wife leaves a husband, is there, is, does that bring grief? Yes. Who paid the price? Jesus. So you can go to Jesus because of that. So anything that happens in our lives that causes grief, Jesus paid the price for us in Jesus' name. Amen? Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Ready? Read. He personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree as on an altar and offered himself on it that we might die, cease to exist to sin, and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have what? Been healed. With an E-D, right? What does that mean? What is an E-D? Past tense. Not going to be healed. You were healed. Past tense. Amen? All right, so now we're talking about healing for today's session. And now our bodies are one of our main ministries. It's like the first ministry that God gives to each of us. Our bodies, who does our body belong to? The God does not belong to us. They do not belong to us. Our bodies are the temple of God in Jesus' name. So how many have we heard in the past, it's my body, I can do whatever I want with it. Have you heard that from people? It's not our body. For us, that belong to the Lord Jesus. It is not our bodies. Our bodies belong to God, and we are just entrusted. We are stewards of the, the, these temples in Jesus' name. So question for Hudson Church today. Are we taking godly care of our temples? You don't have to ask, answer it, but godly care of our temples. 
Amen? So now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. Let's all read. Ready? Read. Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received as a gift from God? You are not your own. Verse 20. You were bought with a price, purchased with a preciousness, and paid for, made his own. So then, honor God and bring glory to him. Where? In your body. Bring glory and honor to him in your body. Uh, so whatever we do, uh, this is our first ministry. So people say, God, trust me with more. Because I'm taking care of the first thing I gave you to trust. Are you taking care of these temples the way God, uh, are we exercising? Are we giving it the right fuel? Are we, are we giving it rest? Are we taking care of what's in our bodies also? It's not only this, the body, is our mind part of our bodies? Yeah. What are we feeding our mind? Are we feeding it poison? Are we feeding it uh, on corruption? Or are we feeding it uh, the, the word of God and godly things? What about our ears? Are they part of our bodies? What are we listening to? What about our eyes? What are we watching? What, you know, what, what's going in through our eyes? Okay, so remember, that's all part of our bodies in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. Ready? Read. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you, in view of all the mercies of God. Let's all read. Ready? Go. To make a decisive dedication of what? Of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. So now when we take care of our bodies, and when we're talking about our bodies, is our minds, our hearts, can we have a sharp a, a, a smart mind, let's call it a, a, an intelligent mind, a good body and a heart to be full of poison, yeah. wickedness, right? So it's everything that we have to take care of, okay? Uh, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external, superficial customs, but be transformed, changed, by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for whom? For you. For you, for each one. So now, if you have not been a good steward of our temples, how many here have not been good stewards? I'll raise my hands and my legs. Okay, we have not been a good steward in the past of our temples. Remember, we're talking about temples, not only your body. You can be look like Mr. America, and, and you're still not, and your temple is polluted inside. Okay? So how many here know what termites are? In a house, right? So in a house, the house can look beautiful, and you get a wood, and you squeeze it, and what happens to it? it the, the wood just crushes in your hands. How did that happen? Because it looked good from the outside, but inside it was corroded inside. So don't look at somebody from the outside and say, that person got it all going on. Because it's, it's inside and outside for each of us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Amen. So now, we need to repent, okay? Ask God to heal our temple, to restore our temples in Jesus' name. Amen? So when I was away and I came back, uh, we have a pretty new house, and the weather came, and it had the, the bricks, destroyed the bricks that, you know, I said, oh my God, what happened? It looked like lightning hit the house, and what did I have to do? I had to restore that house, okay? I had to fix it, so the same way in us, we, if we don't give maintenance to our bodies or to anything, what happens to it? It falls apart, okay? So this is constantly, not that I, I gave it maintenance, we have to give it maintenance all the time. Ladies and men, if you don't clean your house, what happens? Does it get cleaned up by itself? No. no. Do things start wearing out? Yes. So we have to give it maintenance all the time. So we have to give our mind maintenance. We have to give our eyes maintenance. We have to give our ears maintenance. We have to give our bodies maintenance in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So we have to repent. And what does repent mean? To turn our ways. Okay? So some people, how many of you seen on, on Christian television, and you see people going like this and turning around, spinning around, like it was doing something. 
Have we seen that? If you see that, if I turn around and I land in the same spot, what happens? Nothing, because I landed in the same spot. Repent means do a 180. If I was going this way, now I'm going to go this way. Not a 360, but a 180. So if I was doing things one way, now I'm going to repent means do a 180 and go the other way. Amen? So we have to repent. Amen? Amen. All right, so now, who is our number one example? Jesus. Jesus. Let's look at one more point before we, we get into Jesus. In Luke 13, verse 1. Ready? Go. Everybody, ready? Go. There were present at that season some who told them about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Verse 2. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans? Because they suffered such things. Now, we hear about a country having a natural disaster, right? And what is what you hear about Christian people start talking about that? Oh, that happens to them because they don't uh, 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 worship the Lord Jesus because of this and this and that. Saying that they're worse sinners than we are or than we were, okay? This is what it's saying. This is the Lord Jesus saying, do you suppose that those were worse sinners than the others? Look what Jesus says, verse 3. I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Verse 4. Or those 18 on whom the tower of Siloam fell and killed them. What tower fell in our lives? Okay, when the towers fell on them, okay? Do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? Okay, now, people, we hear stories of people uh, that got saved, the mighty miracles that happened, uh, that you don't hear that much about it, uh, how people got escaped from the fall. And now some people might think, oh, those who died, they must have been real bad, and they must have been. And here it's saying, do you think that those were worse sinners than all the other men who dwelt there? Look what happened, verse 5. I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So the thing that we have to see here is we all need to repent. We all need to change our ways. We need to change from doing things the way the world does it to do things the way God wants us to do it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So now Jesus brings healing, and we must believe this. So to finish up for today, I just want to see some examples of the healing of Jesus so that our faith can grow, and you can see what Jesus did. So we're going to read here a little bit. Uh, Matthew 8, 1 through 4. Ready? Go. When he had come, everybody, when he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Verse 2. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Verse 3. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now some of us read the word leprosy. And we don't really understand it. But if you know people that have uh, psoriasis and skin diseases, right? And they go to doctor after doctor, this, uh, lotion after lotion, and they don't get this, uh, the, uh, the healing of it, right? You t we take our skin for granted. Those of us who don't have a problem. There are people who spend their lives in agony on their skin issues, okay? So but here have, they came to Jesus asking him or worshiping him. They came worshiping him, okay? And immediately he said that I am willing to heal him. So leprosy or skin diseases, can Jesus heal him? Right. Yes, okay? Verse 5. I'm sorry, verse 4. Okay. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go your way. Show yourselves to the priests and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Verse 5. Another healing. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him. Verse 6. Saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. So now, somebody paralyzed. Have you seen people paralyzed? Okay. Uh, uh, does the world have a cure for paralysis? No. Okay. But here we have somebody paralyzed. Okay. And dreadfully tormented. Now, isn't being tormented pretty bad? So what about if you're dreadfully tormented? All right? Verse 7. Okay? And Jesus said to him, I will come and do what? And heal him. Verse 8. 
The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. So do we need the physical Jesus to be there to heal ourselves? No, all we need is what? The word of God, because it is the word of God that brings the healing, okay? Verse 9. For I am also a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and he said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great what? faith, not even in Israel. Verse 11. And I say to you that many will come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 12. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. And verse 13.